Good evening, my name is Jim Stifler and welcome to Global Entrepreneurship Week. This worldwide celebration champions the entrepreneurial spirit and looks at the passions necessary to build a sustainable and successful enterprise. Global Entrepreneurship Week is sponsored in Hudson and Northeastern Ohio by Hudson's very own Burton D. Morgan Foundation. Tonight, we'll focus on growing a company. If you were with us this past Monday, we focused on starting a company. But to tell us about growing a company, and I mean growing a company, we have Hudson's very own Matt Colleague. He's the founder and executive chairman of the Colleague Companies. And we'll talk about what the Colleague Companies means today. He's also a notable philanthropist throughout Northeastern Ohio. And if that's not enough, He's got five cars on the NASCAR circuit right now. So he's a busy guy, and he's given us some time. Welcome to Global Entrepreneurship Week, Matt. Thanks for making time. Well, thanks. It's great to be here, uh, right here in Hudson, right here in Hudson High School. And, and uh, couldn't be more excited to talk entrepreneurialism yeah. and uh, just about our businesses and growth. Great topic, growing businesses. So uh, love it. Looking forward to it. Well, take me back to the beginning. Let's, let's bring people current and sort of set the table for them. I think somewhere around 2005, you were already a guy with energy, but you said, I'm going to start something. Take us from there to now. Yeah, well, so I went to the University of Akron. So I'm actually, I grew up in Cincinnati. I'm from Chicago. Um, came to play football at the University of Akron on a football scholarship. So uh, while I was playing football, I played quarterback. Uh, I was going to business school. So my very first job at a business school was selling remodeling products. So everything for the home, windows, siding, kitchens, uh, roofs, basement, just every, everything for the home. So that's how I just kind of understood the, the, you know, the, the home selling business and installation. So was a sales manager there for four years, or was a salesman there for four years, became sales manager of that company. And then in 2005, came across this product uh, called Leaf Filter. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's a surgical grade stainless steel screen that just keeps literally keeps all the debris and leaves and everything else out of the gutters. And at the time, I thought just an un I mean an unbelievable product. It was maybe two years old. Mm -hmm. It was it's the most innovative, uh, best product that I've ever seen. It was just so much different than everything because it 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 worked. Mm -hmm. Most of the products out there, as you and I talk about, just they don't work. And the leaf filter product actually works and it was great. So I saw an opportunity to be able to sell a product that was phenomenal and uh, just couldn't believe how easy I thought that it was gonna be to market. It's something everybody needs and then, and then to sell. So in 2005, I literally quit my job <laughs> at that company uh, that I was doing well at mm -hmm. and said I could make more money actually doing this out of my house. So uh, that's what I did. I quit my job and started selling. Um, you know, I lived in Stowe at the time mm -hmm. and uh, started selling leaf filter. I was one of 90 leaf filter dealers uh, in, the, in the U.S. And did so, I hear you used to sell them at like flea markets and things like that? Yeah, that was my very first <laughs> way that we generated, uh, you know, appointments is I went to Hartville Flea Market. A lot yeah. of people, have, you know, know about Hartville yeah. and all the people that go there. So philosophically, even in business, it's like, that's marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go where the people are. Um, I think even at the time, back in 2005, 2006, and they were open, I don't know if it's still this way, but they were open three days a week. Mm -hmm. So every, literally three days a week, I would go down to the flea market and set up a booth huh. and with a running water display with leaf filter. And you know, you're at the flea market. So you're standing there next to somebody that sells candles and, and <laughs> the guy next to you is, selling firewood and, um, and we're generating appointments. And, uh, and we, we did a lot of business out of the Hartville flea market, so. Was this product sold or was it bought? Did people know they needed these things or did you convince them? Yeah, no, everybody knows. It, you know, one, yeah. of the things about, um, one of the things about marketing sometimes or even being an entrepreneur or uh, trying to get your name out there or the product is like people don't know, people don't know you exist. I mm -hmm. mean, how do you, you know, how do you know, um, so they know that they need it, mm -hmm. but they don't know where to get it. And sometimes you have to just show up at something like a flea market. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think that selling a home improvement product or a remodeling product or something for your home, that you would be you know, doing that at the flea market. Like I said, yeah. you're going for candles and yeah. uh, antiques and, yeah. and things like that. But a guy like Jim walks by 
and you say, wow, what is, what is that? Mm -hmm. What are you selling here? Mm -hmm. And you know, you, then you pitch you know, the, the gutter mm -hmm. protection and who cleans out your gutters. And you're like, I have trees all over my yard. Mm -hmm. And you know, I could come out and give you a free estimate. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I'm out to your house showing you the product. You love it. Mm -hmm. You didn't know it existed. You've never seen it before. And then we're installing it in your, on your home. And, and you clean and caulk the my gutters while you're there, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we clean them out. So Everybody wins. So that's one of the things about Mark. You never know when you're going to get to people. Mm -hmm. You never know when they're going to see something. You never know what, uh, you know, who's, you never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. Even this show right now. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody's probably, you know, saying, hey, what is that leaf filter? <laughs> so it's leaffilter.com. Go to leaffilter.com. <laughs> And so bring us from there to today. I mean, you got pretty successful pretty yeah. fast with this. So talking about growing a business and yeah, I started uh, just out of my house in 2005. Yeah. And then so worked for two years out of my house. Um, you know, I think we did $350,000 in revenue that very that first year in 2005, which is crazy. I mean, three, we did $350,000 worth. I sold every single job. We just worked here in Northeast Ohio. It was all in the garage or something? Stacked yeah, I mean, that was, we had, uh, yeah, my, my, uh, my wife would get a little irritated because mm -hmm. uh, the leaf filter boxes would be, it was working out of my house. So mm -hmm. I had to, you know, our, our garage basically was, uh, was, the, warehouse. was the warehouse. <laughs> and so, you know, coming home from work, I mean, she'd pull in the driveway and just boxes everywhere. So eventually had to get an office. So. So 2005 and 2006 worked out of my house. Yeah. Uh, 2006 grew a little bit more, uh, did $710,000 in business. Hmm. Uh, I had two sales reps, so we were still doing it out of my house. And then, you know, it got to the point where we were growing and getting bigger in Cleveland in the, in the Northeast Ohio market and needed to get an office. So got an office over here on Georgetown Road mm -hmm. here in Hudson. Yeah. And I got a 2,500 square foot, you know, unit that had four or five offices and then warehouse. And, you know, we did $1.7 million in 2007. So even that growth was, was pretty good. Yeah. So then it became part of, you know, doing that for three years in Northeast Ohio and saying, hey, I can do this in other cities. Yeah. I mean, that's how you grow. I mean, you can't just do, you can only get so big in, in one area. Yeah. So, uh, so decided to open 2008, decided to open up in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Columbus, and Toledo. And the reason I did that was because I could literally drive there every day. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're all two hours away from, from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we did. So it was 2008. We did uh, $5.4 million, uh, you know, that year. But, you know, that so was one just, of those things. You're just going like this already. It's, it's going great, but then 2008 hits. Yep. I mean, you remember it's yeah, oh the yeah. end of 2008, especially 2009. in the home business. Yeah. And so that was a really tough uh, situation, even to understand, like, how to deal with that, what to do, actually what to do. You know, I was, uh, what, 36 years old mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. and wanted to continue to grow and had a great year in all four cities. And so I wanted to open you know, op open a few more offices. But man, January 2009, it's like, man, do you do that? Do you invest the money in the yeah. company like that? Or, yeah. you know, so, you know, I had, I had read somewhere that government jobs were good when the economy's bad, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> so I said, that makes sense. And so I put, literally put two offices out in the Washington DC area. Okay. I put one in Baltimore and one in Manassas, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. And then I opened one in Cincinnati. But um, knew it was an attitude, you know, and I mean, that's a good lesson for people when you're growing a business or like you, it's, it's a motivational thing, even for your employees or just to get after it. That was a really tough time back in 2009 because when you're listening to the radio every day and watching television and it's all gloom and doom, right? Mm -hmm. All the news was bad. Uh, companies were failing. Banks were failing. Mm -hmm. um, there's bankruptcies everywhere. Uh, unemployment's at an all-time high. Yeah. And so, you know, it was back before we had Zoom or like any social media or anything like that. So um, I knew that I had to do something to make our employees feel, and even customers, feel okay about, you know, doing business. So I literally, Jim, every single morning had a conference call with the company, with okay? Company. With our company. Mm -hmm. And I had a rule, you're not allowed to watch TV mm -hmm. and you're not allowed to listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to listen to music. You mm -hmm. can't listen to the news or anything mm -hmm. because it's all bad yeah. and it's all negative and you're going to think the world's crumbling. Right. And so we would I, I said, I will tell you the news, whatever news you want. I can I'll tell you the news. 
and I'll have a morning conference to say, uh, or conference call to say what our numbers were and how many sales we were making. So it became a, it became a which we used to call the leaf filter economy, mm-hmm. where the leaf filter economy was amazing, mm-hmm. um, you know, but it's things that people put in your head to make you think things aren't great. But, you know, I thought, well, you know, the leaves are still going to fall. The yeah. leaves, the trees don't know the economy's bad, right? Yeah. They're still getting taller every year. They're dropping leaves. Um, you know, so if the unemployment rate was, I don't know, yeah. 13% or whatever it was, that means 87% of the people are still working. So yeah. we're just going to sell those 87%. So it was just attitudes like that. that So you you brought the team into the huddle, and you were the quarterback again. That's right. You were the quarterback again. You said, hey, we're going to get through this. Trust me. And you're going to roll. Yeah. And so even in the worst, one of the worst years, right, in the history of the the country, business-wise, we went from 5.4 million to 11.6 million. So we more than doubled our, you know, our sales. In 08, 09. In in 09, yeah. Yeah, wow. Wow. So that's fun. Yeah. And great stories. And I was pe- just yeah. and people were believing. They were they were breaking out of that huddle and they believed. Yeah, you believed. They believed. Yeah. But I mean it is it is about that. It's about it's about the attitude of uh, of, of winning and growing. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one and I know we're talking about growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's really important even for the attitude of an organization and the attitude of employees. Uh, to grow, mm-hmm. to realize that they have growth potential yeah. within the company. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody wants to just come to a company, in my opinion, nobody wants to just go to a company and then say that's their job and then that's the money that they're going to make mm-hmm. and then that's just going to be their job for the re- you know, till the end of time or until they're not there anymore or till they grow old. It's just, that's just a, not a great way, in my opinion, uh, to run a business or a, an organization. It's all about uh, growth, you know, we have, like you mentioned, I own a NASCAR team, mm-hmm. and even in the NASCAR series, you know, we're growing. I mean, we're mm-hmm. running, we're running two full-time Cup cars next year. We're running three Xfinity cars. Um, you know, we started six years ago with one car in the mm-hmm. Xfinity series, and then it turned into running two teams. Mm-hmm. And then now this year, the last two years, we've run three teams, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just all about growth. But on the wall up in the race shop, mm-hmm. it says, and it's one of my favorite sayings, is either you continue to grow or you begin to die. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just stay stagnant in business. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing whatever you're doing, if you're doing a million dollars a year in sales, um, it is tempting just to sit there and say, all right, I'm good. Mm-hmm. We'll do a million dollars in sales. I'll just do this for the rest of time, you yeah. know? And it just doesn't work that way. It, mm-hmm. I don't know why, uh, yeah. but stuff happens. You could either do a little mm-hmm. bit better or a little bit worse, but just things don't, they just don't work that way. So you have to continue to grow. You have to continue to invest in the business and just for, for ultimate growth. So you got through the worst financial crisis in the modern era yep. and things were looking great, but we hadn't seen anything yet. What happened after that? Well, as far as our growth in our business, yeah. well, we continued to just grow. So um, it felt, we felt okay growing about three cities a year. Mm-hmm. You know, so we went from, you know, even in, in um, what, 2009, we had seven offices. And then we went to 10 offices and then 13 offices and, mm-hmm. you know, and so on. And so we were growing maybe three or four offices a year, you know, and went, and, and if we talk numbers as far as how, uh, you know, our sales volume went from, like I said, 11.6 million in 2009 mm-hmm. to 19 million to 27 million to 35 million to 50 million to, you know, and, and, and so on. And then, um, yeah, and then, as you know, I got a, a private equity company involved mm-hmm. back in 2016. How did that come about? Did you, did you want to do this, or did you just say, why would I do that? Well, you're growing. So if you think about, um, I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about an entrepreneurial like business mm-hmm. that is literally like gutter, it's gutter screens. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's gutter protection where we literally go clean out your gutters and then put the screens on. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a four hour job. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's you're only dealing with a couple colors mm-hmm. of, of screens. They're, the gutters are pretty much the same size. So I mean, even skews, you're talking about four. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so it's a 
it's a it's a simple business, I, right. I should say, right? It's not easy, but it's it's a simple, and so that's how I looked at it, um, you know. And so it was it was easy to scale, and, and it was simple to scale. Mm -hmm. um, what was the question? Well, you just uh, the phenomenal growth from yeah. the you know post oh, twenty ten. You were today. asking about gridiron. You were yeah. asking about how did I get into yeah. that? So. Yeah. Um, so we continued to grow the business uh -huh. and then, um, you know, became, I don't know, we were a hundred million dollar mm -hmm. company that was had maybe 30 offices, uh, you know, in the U.S. Uh, I had... So you're a hundred million already. Well, so here's the thing. I can't, I mean, I know it's not a crazy long program, but, but eventually what happened is, and I told you in the beginning that we had 90 dealers nationwide. Yeah. Uh, when I was one of 90 dealers, I yeah. mean, there were, there were contractors and leaf filter dealers all over the country. And so eventually I started just taking over those dealership. Yeah. Wasn't even buying them, just took over the territory because we were so, so much better than everybody yeah. else. Uh -huh. And so the manufacturer was just letting us do that. Huh. So then eventually I took over the, the uh, sales and marketing and distribution for the U.S. and Canada. So essentially became the middleman for all the other leaf filter dealers. Hmm. So anybody in the U.S. and Canada that, were buying leaf, that was buying leaf filter had to buy it from me. Hmm. So I set up a distribution company uh, to do that. And then I also signed an option agreement to buy the manufacturing, to buy the patent, to buy leaf filter mm -hmm. as a whole. So I eventually did that in 2015. So then I bought the patent, I bought the manufacturing, and I bought, you know, hmm. I owned leaf filter. So, so you're making it, the razors and the blades and everything. Yeah, so everything yeah. was, it, it was great. So, um, you know, we were a hundred million, then it grew to a hundred million dollars. Wow. And it's just a different company. I mean, that's a, that's a different, you know, from working a flea market mm -hmm. and, you know, going to people's mm -hmm. homes mm -hmm. to, you know, to do that and learning QuickBooks and just, you know, writing checks by hand and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> to a, a pretty sizable corporation, a big corporation, uh, takes a, it's a different skill set, even for all of your employees that, that come up. You have to start hiring outside people, like a professional CFO. And, um, Were you, you know, exhilarated or terrified? Uh, exhilarated because of the, the fun growth. You know, uh, obviously it was making more money, and so things were great, but it was the, it was the fun part of business that be, was getting bigger. So right. now, now you're dealing with big business and with 30 offices and regional managers and vice presidents, and so it's just different. Mm -hmm. But it was, um, I was gonna say, about time to take some of my chips, so to speak, mm -hmm. some of it off the table. Yeah, come in. Well, when you're growing a business, as you know, um, you're, you're investing your money. I was the sole owner of, of Leaf Filter. Mm -hmm. So every time you know, we would start in January, mm -hmm. you were, you're really starting over. I mean, yeah. you're starting, you know, once we did the leaf filter on people's homes, there wasn't, I mean, we didn't sell any other products. Mm -hmm. and, and so once we do your home, you, we don't, you don't need us anymore. Right. And so you go search for new customers. So then doing that every year, you're literally throwing all your money in mm -hmm. and saying, all right, let's, you know, not I hope this works because it's gonna, you know, we've gotten really systematic and, and been able to scale the business. But you also lose some sleep saying, ah, th with this thing goes sideways, like I just, I didn't, I didn't save, I didn't save any money. You know, yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm so hyper-focused on growing. So then, you know, we we're, were able to take on a, a, a private equity partner and, um, you know, take some of that risk off the table. And so one of the major things that we did over the last three or four years was really accelerate the growth of opening offices. Mm -hmm. You know, when we when we would go to cities, uh, they were successful. I mean, we've mm -hmm. never we've never closed a leaf filter office. Uh, we've always been successful in every city that we've mm -hmm. been in. Um, and, and you've so, got what 120 now? Or well, so? now we have 130. 130 yeah. offices so we, in the United States or in, North America? In the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. U.S. and Canada. U.S. and Canada. So okay. we went from three, four, five offices a year to one a month. And from Matt Colleague in his garage to employees yeah. today, how many employees? We've got uh, almost almost 10,000. 10,000 Almost 10,000 employees. Again, all over the U.S. and Canada. How many here in Hudson, Ohio? I don't know. That's a good question. I Somebody asked me that the other day. I, and I, I want to say it's between 900 and 1,000. Yeah, now. I mean, it's, it's somewhere around 1,000. I mean, we've got... Yeah. You know, I, I said over at Georgetown Road, if you've been on Georgetown uh, lately, we went from, you know, a, a, a unit of, you know, a 2,500 square foot unit, which mm -hmm. there's maybe 10 of those in the building that yeah. we were originally in. 
and we eventually took over all of those offices and then <laughs> bought a, you know, a, a building across the street, which is our corporate headquarters. Mm -hmm. So now we've got, we've got seven buildings. Seven buildings. Seven buildings on, from, on Georgetown from Road. From a small suite to seven buildings. You know, my wife was upset because we did, uh, we, when we originally went into our, our corporate headquarters, which is mm -hmm. at 1595 Georgetown Road, Little Leapers was in, oh, you remember. know, yeah. Little Leapers was in yeah. the building. My yeah. daughter was maybe three or four or five yeah. at the time and used to take classes yeah. in Little Leapers. And so we got to the point where we needed to expand where mm -hmm. we were. And so I you bought, squeezed I out, bought little out Little Leapers. <laughs> and so my wife and daughter were so mad whoa, at me. I'm whoa. like, what do you want me to do? I had to, we need the space. So Little Leapers moved you know, down the uh, street and they had a great facility, but it's kind of funny that uh, when you're growing like yeah. that, I mean, you, it's, you kind of have to take mm. over. You know, it's like growing the leaf filter business in other cities and taking over the other businesses yeah. and contractors. I mean, you're literally putting, you know, and putting uh, competitors out of yeah. business. And it, it's an interesting mindset sometimes yeah, yeah. as far as growing. You really have to step out of your comfort zone, and your employees do as well, you mm -hmm. know, to be, able to, to be able to grow like that. So. And are you willing to say where your sales are now? Uh, well, we're well over a billion. I mean, we did $1.1 $1. $1. Yeah. $1. billion dollars, uh, last year. Uh, yeah, and we're we're over that during a pandemic. Pretty good. During during a pandemic, did a pandemic make more people want to buy and fix up the house? You know, it was an interesting it was an interesting situation because yeah, they they were you know we we've done a really great job. We accelerated our TV commercials you know last yeah. year or even a couple of years ago. So we got really good at TV. Yeah, and then we have a digital marketing agency as well okay. that we built from in house mm -hmm. uh, that is just rock star awesome. Uh, and really good at generating appointments. So yeah. last year when the pandemic hit and people were now home, then there's only a couple things to do. You're watching TV, uh -huh. which we're all over the TV, and then we're on the internet, I mean, yeah. or you're on the internet. So You're in the um, Sunday papers, you're in the mailbox. You know, when people needed it, they were fixing up their homes and, yeah. and they saw, you know, that, that huh, mm -hmm. you know, well, let's get a free estimate. Let's see what this stuff costs and let's, let's have a rep out to our home. So that was one of the crazier things about the, the pandemic as well, that I'm still, um, I, guess, I guess the word would be shocked, is that people all over the, the U.S. and Canada had us out to their home. Well, somebody come like, to their right, house. came to your house, <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, thank goodness it was in the spring and the, the summer months, you mm -hmm. know, where, you know, people starting to get comfortable. But, you know, doing demonstrations and, and really you're outside, you know, yeah. giving estimates. But I thought that was pretty pretty crazy, fascinating, that during the pandemic, I mean, people will call you for a, a free estimate to have a stranger, somebody come to their home. So, but we built a really good name and, mm -hmm. and really trustworthy, uh, even all over the, you know, all over the U.S. and Canada. Um, you know, we have great reputation, do a really great job, so. Well, let's close out the backstory and yep. talk about growth a little, because yep. you've been in the Inc. magazine, 5,000 fastest growing companies in America, nine years in a row. Yep. That's like finding the fountain of youth or something, you know? I mean, yeah. It's, well, it's, it's a, to say it's uncommon would be like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I imagine private equity played a role. What, what did they bring to the equation? Well, I mean, you've got enough mojo, you know, what yeah. did they add? It was just, uh, just the comfort of, it's almost... I hate to say almost somebody else's money that you're playing with, right. you know? I mean, it was, again, originally when you're a sole entrepreneur, if you're, you're a sole owner mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, it's just your business, it's all you. There's no differentiation between your personal income and, and, and life and your business. I mean, it's the same exact thing. So if yeah. the business starts to go, you're, and so when you have, you know, other owners or private equity mm -hmm. or somebody else buys the business, then it's all, you know, it's, it's really on the banks. Not yeah. that you don't care if the, you know, I'm, I'm still, I still own Leaf Filter and I'm, I'm heavily invested in the company and, mm -hmm. and Leaf Home and the businesses that we have, um, you know, but I mean, that would be the answer is it, it it's a, a more freeing feeling mm -hmm. of, you know, what, what do they say? Like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Right. You know, it'd be crazy. So that's what we did. We've really accelerated. So the same stuff that goes in one of your NASCARs, they were just spraying on your company. That's were, right. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a good plan. So it's, that's uh, a good plan. So it's been great. And, and I feel that way about all of our businesses. You know, it's funny. I'll tell you a quick story about um, my daughters. 
uh, 14 years old. She's in eighth grade. So mm -hmm. here in Hudson, she goes to the middle school. And, you know, about, I'm going to say four years ago when these kids were like in fourth grade, maybe it was three years ago, but uh, they had, uh, they would have these career days where mm -hmm. I think on Fridays they would have the parents come in and talk about their job and, mm -hmm. uh, and everything else. So, you know, it was my turn to come into the classroom and talk about, you know, my job. But, you know, they're fourth graders or fifth graders. Mm -hmm. and, and so to talk about gutter screens mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I do for a living was a little bit of a weird situation. So I decided to teach them about business and about lemonade stands. Yeah. So I liken our business to like a lemonade stand where I think it's exactly the same where mm -hmm. you just have to get the ingredient, you know, and telling these kids like you have to just get lemons and sugar and, and you have to have marketing and you mm -hmm. go to, you know, do you think it's best to go at the end of the cul-de-sac where there's no traffic mm -hmm. or do you think it's good to go on a busy street corner, mm -hmm. you know, and just teaching the kids, you know, st stuff like that, um, you know, was really cool. And, how do you make a sign and how do you price it and how do you, um, you know, we started talking about scaling. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about that right now, yeah. about how do you scale a business. Yeah, yeah. Well, you take a lemonade stand and you put another one, <laughs> you know, down the road and you convince your, one of your buddies, you know, <laughs> one of your classmates yeah. to go, but you get half the money, you know. Yeah. I'll give you a quarter for every, you know. And then it there's turned, two days of cannibalization, yeah. and all of a sudden you're making three times as much money as you were before. And then the kids figure out, well, wait a minute, I don't need Johnny to do this. I could just do this myself. Yeah. And so, um, but I'm telling you, that summer you couldn't you yeah. couldn't go anywhere in Hudson without seeing one of these kids yeah. selling lemonade. So yeah. it was. It was uh, it and was I really think you cool. were involved a couple of years ago. What was the British racing project where they had the kids make race cars? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And they designed them and they made decisions about their wheels yeah. and their weight and everything. What is that called? They're bringing that back again. What yeah. is that called? That was uh, a good program. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so these kids, they engineer like yeah. their their cars yeah. and then they put them on these little rockets and yeah. they just. Oh, yeah. They, On the track, they, they right, at fast. the high school. They were fast. Yeah. That was a fun project. That so was cool. And now you know all about that. So uh -huh. so talk about the culture in your company. you got 10,000 people now. You know, you're obviously a high-energy guy. You know, you walk in your buildings, the music's thumping, you know. Um, who do you look for? Who works for you? Why do they work for you? What's the differentiator there? Well, we've had a, you know, been fortunate enough to have a lot of great people. And I think that's one of the things in companies that is really hard, uh, you know, for entrepreneurs even to deal with of, of who to hire. Mm -hmm. Or, like I said, when you start to really grow a company, it's a different skill set. I mean, when you hire, um, I'm going to say, like or, or your CFO or an accountant, mm -hmm. and you're a, you know, you do fifty thousand dollars a year in sales. Uh, there's a big difference in the level of that person than when you do $50 million in sales or 100 million or a billion dollars, mm -hmm. you know, in sales. So, um, you know, just being able to motivate, you know, everybody really th mm -hmm. throughout the country on, on doing it. We've, I wear these uh, wristbands. I was going to ask you about this. Yeah, so Lee Filter, one of, on one end says Lee Filter, and this is TNT, mm -hmm. okay, which stands for today, not tomorrow. So do it now. Do it now. Do Don't it put now. off till tomorrow what you can do today. Yeah. So it's almost a, a mindset and an attitude that you put throughout the company that um, that we just get things done. So mm -hmm. whether you're a call center agent and you're answering the phone and, you know, we want to set the appointment like today, not tomorrow. If we can get out there today and see them, you know, you beat the competition. You beat your mm -hmm. competitors. Yep. You get out there faster. It's speed. Um, same with selling you know if you have a sales rep in a house like you do what you need to do you know whatever mm -hmm. you could do if you could if you could actually get the sale that day right. you know instead of leaving a brochure in the mailbox and not even talking to the people like it's just a mindset of, of uh, TNT so that's one thing the other is uh, says be positive no negativity allowed hmm. so that's a hard thing sometimes yeah. you know with people like to not be negative or to, to mm. remember to stay positive so I always just wear it on my wristband mm -hmm. um, all the time mm -hmm. just to remind me because you know I'm not always mo I feel like I'm always motivated but I, I trust me I'm not always crazy motivated but mm. you have to remind yourself and and you know read read books and listen to motivational people uh, to just find the inspiration just to 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 go forward and then you have to lead your organization. So, I mean, that was mm -hmm. the big thing as we were growing. 
you know, I told you before, we'd have conference calls every morning. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the one doing the conference call. So, you know, when you're, when you're the sales manager or the marketing manager and you have to lead your team, you have to have stuff to talk about like every single day yeah. instead yeah. of the same boring, you know, thing. So, um, so your company kind of runs on adrenaline. No, it's highly skilled now. I yeah. mean, it's a different, it's yeah. a definitely it's a science, different. It's science, yeah, it's data, it's, it's marketing. And the people are, I mean, ridiculously highly skilled. When we started, when you start any business, you're, you're from scratch. I mean, it's almost like a trial and error type, mm. type thing. And I mean, now we have, I don't know, 850,000 customers mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. and Canada. So meaning that we've done 850,000 jobs. Yeah. And so we're really good at it. Yeah. Like in other words, eight hundred fifty thousand homes, and yeah, 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 you know. So one of my favorite lot. podcasts is called "How I Built This" by Guy Raz. Maybe you've heard okay. about it. It's some uh, of the best-known companies in the world, and they interview folks like you. You okay. should be on it, given your record of growth. Um, and invariably, when I listen to it, people talk about two or three landmark decisions they made, or um, a fork in the road, and they took the lucky path. You know, look back and, and think about this meteoric growth. I mean, as I said to you before, hockey stick doesn't do you credit. It's yeah. more like rocket ship. Yeah. Um, <laughs> were there two or three things in the last 10 years that just set you apart or, you know, took you in, in, into a, a, an orbit that you didn't know was there? Uh, you know, and I would say we had, we had a really great product. You know, we, we did a really great job of selling and installing and marketing you know that product but i would say it's the pe it's the people i mean there were there were some key people that uh that that i made great decisions on on getting them um they cost a lot of money they're highly skilled highly uh great skilled guys and girls but you know just i mean i would say that if we were talking about if we were talking about the Cleveland Browns or if we have a sports team, I would almost liken it to that, where you go out and spend the money to get that free agent. Mm -hmm. You know, you get that great quarterback that's going to lead your organization. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, just even a few people uh, here in Hudson, I won't call anybody out, but, you know, I got a great sales guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Chris Cunahan, he lives here in Hudson. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just a great guy highly skilled, just a great motivator, really great skilled sales uh, salesperson and a great sales manager that can teach other people to be great sales managers. So um, he was great. Um, Jeff Beck, who's our chief growth officer, he was CEO you know, for, for even a few years and, and brought him in and he really designed and developed all the systems you know, mm -hmm. for the company from you know, you talk about a, a growth company too, mm -hmm. you know, had, you know, even before we had company email, you know, Jeff had a consulting uh, business that, that, uh, that put all that stuff together for me in a service module. And then our call center, like everything that we do, um, we do, you know, of what we built. And yeah. so now there's, a, there's an IT department mm -hmm. that we have 75 people in, you yeah. know? Hmm. And it's just the, uh, like I said, when you scale a, a business, you know, and again, we'll do, you know, even in the next couple of years, we'll do a couple billion dollars. And then mm. and then I'm sure that that will continue to grow where we'll be sitting here in, in 10 years and say, wow, we do 10 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got all these companies doing things for the home. And um, so, you know, that's that's super exciting. But again, that will be a whole different skill set and, um, you know, run companies. So. You know, fortunately, I feel I feel blessed that I was able to handle. Mm -hmm. You know, I stepped aside as CEO when we were, I think, three hundred. I think my last year we were three hundred eighty-two million. Okay. So we went from three hundred eighty-two million to five hundred and something yeah. million yeah. to one point one billion. So mm -hmm. again, that was only three. You know, three years ago. Oh, yeah. But you know, so it's grown. I mean, a crazy amount even since uh, since I haven't been running the day-to-day -day operations. But now, the, just, the flip side of great lessons learned. Yeah. Um, was there ever an earth-shaking fumble where you, you just really learned something tremendous that, you know, maybe you recovered it, you know? Well, I'm, uh, guess, I'm guessing you, 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 you jumped on it and picked it back up. Yeah, but. nothing nothing crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I can remember when we were, you know, I was almost going to change our business model to more of like a franchise model mm -hmm. where we would sell franchises, almost mm -hmm. sell franchises to other dealers. 
So when I started, we were one of 90 dealers. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few years later, we had, there, were 60 de there were 69 dealers. Mm -hmm. And I took over the distribution for the US and Canada, which meant you know, when people bought it, they had to buy from me. Mm -hmm. So I literally brought 69 companies and mm -hmm. owners to the Sheraton Suites here in Cuyahoga Falls. <laughs> and we had a conference about teaching them exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. All right, we've been able to you know, sell millions of dollars in cities where they weren't able to do that. So mm -hmm. it was just about teaching them exactly how we did that. So you were saying either start to grow <laughs> or start to die. Yeah. Well, and, and so it was teaching them how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so we sat in a giant ballroom, mm -hmm. okay, and I just taught everybody, okay, for a couple of days. And when I say it was an argument between them and me, mm -hmm. them saying, ah, you can't do things that way. Mm -hmm. You can't, that's not how. I've been doing this longer than you've been yeah, alive. Yeah, you can't yeah. do that. It's yeah. 2012. And I'm like, well, guys, this is what we do. This is in theory. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just remember talking to a dealer one time uh, and almost arguing and saying and really teaching him. So my mm -hmm. point is, uh, you know, I spent four hours teaching uh, uh, one guy in Des Moines, Iowa, about the business that they, and I looked and I think we made $200 off of them. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, all right, can't do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not even going to deal. Let's control what we can control. Yeah. Um, again, without getting too much of details, yeah. you, and you can't control other people and other dealers, the, the workmanship they do and everything else. So uh, that was one thing that ended pretty quick mm -hmm. where I was going to do that model and then within a couple of months saying, nope, we're just going to work with our people. We care about customers. We care about customer service. And we know if we do the job, we're going to do a great job and we just don't have to worry about it. So Leaf Filter yep. became part of Leaf Home and you're selling water solutions and bath retrofits and yep. ambulatory things into an aging society. Yep. Uh, we were talking about my mom a little while ago. So, you know, I know that, um, you know, there's a, a big market for that and it's, yep. it's booming. And then you've built basically, I guess we'd call them verticals, five verticals or so around that. That's right. T tell everybody about that a little bit. Well, so we've taken a uh, leaf filter. And so for years that so we did just gutter screens, we just did the leaf filter gutter protection. We didn't have any other products uh, decided, which I would tell people and teach people is to, to just keep it, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Become really good at one thing mm -hmm. instead of trying to diversify, you know, so um, you know, we did that until about two years ago. Uh, we did start our agent in place, uh, you know, business called Leaf Home Safety Solutions, yeah. which is, uh, you know, which is, um, you know, stair lifts, mm. you know, t going from the first story to the second story, walk-in bathtubs mm -hmm. where they're just, mm. or zero entry, oh, yeah. you know, tubs and showers where you need, you know, you don't need, if you can, if you can retrofit your home, yeah. you know, to keep, from going to like a, a senior living. facility yeah. or assisted yeah. living. It's really bathroom space and every. So anyway, oh, yeah. we figured that out. I'm we, living this right now. Yeah, I am. yeah. And, it, and it's tough and people want to stay in their home, right? I mean, see, they definitely want to stay in their home, but it's not safe. So if we can make that safe, so, you know, talk about- Can you make the bathroom bigger? No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, that's what I need right now for her. <laughs> I need a bigger bathroom. Then we put the walk-in tub in. You know, and yeah. so yeah. even talking about growing businesses, yeah. I mean, we're already on. We just opened up um, our 15th location for huh. Leaf Home Safety Solutions. Huh. Um, you know, I mean, we'll do 50 some million dollars. Same in model. That. Same Boom. exact thing. Yeah. You know, and even talking about growing and scaling a business, we had, I always use, I use McDonald's as yeah. like the, the um, you know, the way I describe yeah. how you scale a business is, you know, even, even a leaf filter business or a leaf home safety solutions business is you just do everything the same. I know how to do, you know, our business here in Cleveland. So if you're doing it in Pittsburgh or Columbus or Des Moines, Iowa or Sacramento, California, if you're on your own system or your management team or is on their own thing mm -hmm. and they have trouble somehow in whatever it is, whether it's marketing or installation or sales, if they're doing their own thing, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to you've got to be able to have everybody on the same system. Yeah. Um, and so so we've done a really good job of doing that. In fact, if you go to our leaf filter offices now, there's 130 of them. They have the same desks in every office. I mean, it looks the same. <laughs> You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and so you know 
where everything is in the thing. I mean, we have the files set up the same way. Hey, what, you're, you're missing paperwork? All right, go to your bottom right drawer <laughs> in the third folder in, you know, and pull it out. So, you know, it seems logical after uh. you say it, but I mean, those are, th those are hard things to implement in a business yeah. and a culture yeah. of, uh, you know, and you have to, you've got to be successful over a number of years for people even to understand or believe just what you're saying. Hey, yeah. just trust me, you yeah. know? You just have to trust me that we know what we're doing. And when you do have a good track record, then the credibility is already, you know, already there. When you're just starting a business and you're trying to get your employees to say, hey, I know you've got your own ideas, but like, just listen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not the easiest, you know, yeah. that's not the easiest thing to do, so. Yeah. So a couple more uh, quick questions, and okay. then we'll see what uh, the audience has sent in, because they're coming into us live here. So, um, you know, around some of these businesses you built, You've got one called um, Call It Giving. Yeah. And uh, you know, everywhere I go, I see your efforts. And I'm told you want to um, give money to 100 or more 50C3s this year. Yeah. Is that correct? No, we did. We, we are giving uh, yeah, yeah. to 501C3s, so a hun over 100. Yeah. yeah, so that's our philanthropy. Let's say that's our charitable giving programs uh, that started you know, several years ago. Um, just to give back to the community, people in need, mostly kids and their direct families here mm -hmm. in Northeast Ohio. So, um, you know, I do a segment, you know, I have, I guess, for several years now uh, on Fox 8, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, with, with them, uh, highlighting a, a charity or an organization or a company or a person mm -hmm. that are doing great things for Northeast Ohio. So, um, teach our company, teach our kids, you know, that it's really important to give back. We've been very fortunate, you know, mm -hmm. in talking about uh, the growth of our business and the money that we've been able to, to, to make. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, that's one of the companies in college companies mm -hmm. is our, we've got a media company, we've got Ellsworth, which is our wealth management and advisory, uh, you know, firm. Um, you know, we've got our NASCAR team mm -hmm. and some of the things that we do in sports. And then we've got college giving, which is our charitable giving program. Um, that responsibly gives, you know, uh, money to charities. So you so, figured out how to make all <clears throat> these intertwine with the others, yeah. support everything you're doing, radiate goodness all around, yeah. and you grow the brand. And you're growing the brand and you grow and you have great people. I mean, yeah. it really takes great people to make an organization or a great team. Um, you create great leaders. You know, another thing we're doing with, with, uh, with Colleague Giving is we're doing – they have what's called uh, Giving Tuesday coming up mm -hmm. on November 30th. Mm -hmm. And so every year we've done something, we go on TV, I know I'm gonna do a, a few things on TV about mm -hmm. philanthropy and, and what we do. Um, but we have, I think we have 93 employees at, at College Giving. So I'm not talking about Leaf Home or, hmm. but just at College Giving, or I'm sorry, at College Companies. Yeah. I can't keep track of all yeah. of And then, hmm. but I think there's 93, but we're, we're having each employee, um, and I'm giving a thousand dollars to the charity of their choice for each employee. For each employee, that's great. And really teaching them how that works, um, encouraging them to give to mm -hmm. that charity. Mm -hmm. And so not only do we get behind it, but then, I mean, you know, we do the Cleveland Indians Giveathon. Yeah. They they came to us. The Indians came to us you know, or the guardians, or they yeah. came to us three years ago yeah. and said, hey, it's amazing what you guys are doing in the community, philanthropy wise, um, can you help us? Yeah. And so not give them money, but just help the organization. Mm -hmm. They had the same people uh, that are marketing, mm -hmm. you know, doing their, doing their charitable giving, which is amazing by the way. But, you know, they're busy playing baseball every single day. Yeah. And uh, so we've gotten really behind and really helped uh, yeah. You know, the Cleveland Indians. I'm a huge uh, baseball fan, and I hear you on the radio. I see you on TV for them. Yeah. When you go sit in the stadium, you know, the, the ring around the bowls there. It's yeah. like, you might not name the outside of the stadium, but he's pretty much named the inside. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to, that's another thing in business. You know, when we were talking about the flea market or yeah, marketing, yeah. you know, I've got another saying that I, that I love. Um, is if you're not yelling it, you're not selling it. Mm. You know, you've got to, people yeah. have to know yeah. who you are. 
you'll see, uh, uh, you know, I have a leaf filter. Yeah. Leg, even tonight, I have yeah. a leaf filter on. Yeah. And people have to know what you do, yeah. you know, for a living, and you just have to have your name out there. So. Yeah. Well, I noticed um, on the upper deck there, your your companies just roll through too. It's, call it, it's, uh, it's not just one of them; it's one after yeah. another after another. So. You gotta um, be seen. Final question from me. Actually, two more. Um, yeah. You you hired a CEO. Uh, three years ago, you know, was that hard? And you know, was it easy to delegate? I mean, he seems like he's doing a heck of a job. You've, yeah. you've tripled or quadrupled since you did it. Yeah. You know, um, but he's running all these companies now, right? Yeah. Well, we have Jeff Beck, and actually, so just we, Jeff Beck took over. So he, he along with me, built all of our systems. So okay. uh, he's the brains behind just our massive growth. Mm -hmm. You know, even with with Leaf Filter, and so. You know, even when I say skill set, mm -hmm. as far as you know, moving aside and having somebody, you know, it was it was it was time for somebody like Jeff, you know, to come in and okay. really take the company to d just another level. So mm -hmm. um, he did an, I mean, an unbelievable job. He's actually now our chief growth officer. Yeah. So we just hired another CEO mm -hmm. uh, that started th this past, you know. This, mm -hmm. this past Monday. So your growth can actually get better. Yeah. So yeah. as as you know, <laughs> and now we're talking we're talking about a company in the billions yeah. of dollars yeah. that takes you know people that have have done that before. Yeah. So you know we're we're we like to say we're smart enough to realize you know what you can do and what you can't do. What's uh what what's time for people to come in and mm -hmm. um, you know and, and take over. But we've, we have developed uh, great leadership and great leaders in all of our businesses, so um, yeah. But no, Jeff, Jeff Beck is, uh, is, is a, just an extremely uh, smart businessman. He's, I, he might be the smartest guy that I've ever met. Wow, and, uh, that's a compliment. You know, so he's our chief growth officer. He built our digital marketing agency and everything from, from absolute scratch and hmm. um, just a brilliant, he was a computer science, you know, guy at from you know he went to Kent State and uh, just grew up had a technology company and an advisory firm that we used mm -hmm. and then you know he was so good it was like can I hire you no mm -hmm. matter what I pay you like it's gonna be worth it so yeah. uh, turns out I was right about that mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah he's uh, He's, he's pretty amazing. Like you said, people. It's people. It's people. I'm telling you. Um, so uh, <coughs> somebody sent in a question I wanted to ask you, too. So entrepreneurs are out there watching and listening. Yeah. What, what two or three things would you tell them about their dreams that you've learned, you know? Well, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of cliche, you know, yeah. as far as just go for it and don't mm. listen to anybody. I mean, I could tell you being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and, and I think entrepreneurs would agree or you hear this all the time, but it's hard. It's mm -hmm. gonna be hard. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're like on your own. You know, mm -hmm. when I started, I was on my own. It was mm -hmm. just me, it was my paycheck, it was my family's paycheck, um, that you literally are getting up every day and you have to make it happen. Yeah. And it's hard work and it's all the time. It's not, you don't yeah. turn it off, you don't go to the office at nine and come home at five and then, oh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it is, uh, it's a pretty stressful, tough thing. Um, I would also say it's hard to stay small. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that. It's hard, the, the growth part of it is difficult to stay as a, like a, a little bit bigger company. Mm -hmm. um, if, you have, uh, if you have a restaurant, let's mm -hmm. say, in town, and you, know, you do a good job at the restaurant, well, to go to another restaurant or take a second restaurant or a third or a fourth, that's really difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so people want to grow their businesses and grow their companies, but you either have to stay small, like small, mm -hmm. and do everything yourself and not hire all these managers. I mean, you have to do the stuff yourself or get really big. Mm -hmm. And so that hard, the hard part is the growth, which is what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. The hard part's the growth, you know, in the meantime, until you get to that big, you know, that, that big level. But, I see so many entrepreneurs or business people um, that are entrepreneurs hire people to mm -hmm. do stuff. Like when I started doing, I'm telling you, I did everything myself. I, I, my cell phone was our business phone. Mm -hmm. I answered the phones. I sold all the business. I was the installation manager. If there were any service calls or any customers needed any questions answered, it was me. And you do everything until, like I said, until you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And then you hire somebody to do those jobs. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I had three people my very first year. I had a kid 
who's still with the company. Mm -hmm. He's not a kid anymore. He's a 40 year old man. But like he was a kid that did our marketing. Mm -hmm. um, you stood at the flea markets and shows and stuff like that. And I had one installer and it was me. Mm -hmm. So I did all the accounting. I had to teach myself QuickBooks. Yeah. You know, a lot of people will and you're just wait. Not, I shouldn't say wasting money, but you're you're having people do things that that you can do mm -hmm. and that you should do. Um, and so maybe that's why you work tirelessly, mm -hmm. you know, to to build a business. But I actually understood, and it teaches you as an entrepreneur to learn everything about the business. So yeah. um, I became really an expert at um, at every single part of our business, which allowed me when I was running the company from, from a, a distance, like to other cities, that I could literally teach everybody exactly what to do, you know, and follow our systems, so. Well, you've got another quality too, and full disclosure, I'm a lifelong salesperson, yeah. so that suits me in yes. my current role here. Yeah. But, um, you know, I work at Jumpstart a couple days a month, and you know, some of the entrepreneurs I meet are absolutely brilliant. You know, their yeah. IQ is, I don't know, two or three times mine. Yeah. They've got passion. They haven't slept in weeks. You know, they're pouring it all in. But you know how to sell. Selling is key. When you were a remodeler and you were going into people's houses and telling them you needed fourteen thousand dollars worth of work, that that's a big number. It's a big number. And you got to put it out there, and then you just got to sit there and let it yeah. sink in. And uh, that's the one thing that I see that I think entrepreneurs really need to work on. They either need to learn to sell or find somebody to sell for them. Yes. You know, because I think most salespeople are born. You know, but maybe you be maybe you think different. Can well, they be made? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Hundred percent can be made. Okay. Yep, yeah, I truly believe. You you've got to have a certain quality or a certain a little bit of a certain yeah. mentality. Yeah. Uh, but no, I've seen I've seen. I mean, anybody sell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to be able to generate leads mm -hmm. or get traffic. You know, yeah. like we were saying, teaching these kids. You gotta, you gotta be able to market. You gotta get your product out there. People have to know what you're doing, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then you have to be able to, you have to be able to sell. Yeah. So that's a really good point. It's all, it's all revenue. I mean, you've yeah. heard me talk about, it's sco that's scoreboard. I mean, mm -hmm. you should look at it as that's your scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. What's our sales? How many sales? And that's the only way to grow a company. I mean, it's you're not going to be able to do it. It's a scoreboard too. At the end of the day, you know whether you won or lost. But yeah, it's the same thing with families. Yeah. I mean, it's like, hey, mm -hmm. you have an income. I mean, you have an income problem. Get a, go get a better job. Mm -hmm. You need more mm -hmm. revenue for mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want a new car, if you want a nicer house, or if you want a new dining room set, you have to you have to make money somehow. Mm -hmm. And so that's it's called revenue. It's the yeah. same in business. So. It's, it's, uh, and the only way to do that is to go sell more stuff. But in most businesses, it's marketing as well. Mm -hmm. um, you have to generate interest, and then you have to be able to do that. And then you've got to be able to perform. You've got to be able to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, install the product, mm -hmm. or you have to be able to fulfill what you're selling, yeah. you know, as well. And then in order to just invest more money into marketing, to get more appointments or more leads yeah. so that your salespeople can go sell so that they can make more money. And then, you know, and it's just a, that's, that's business. Yeah. That's actually business in a nutshell. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, here's an easy one from Facebook land. Uh, what's your giant ring? <laughs> it's a, uh, it's from Daytona. So Daytona, an right? NASCAR team yeah. and we won, uh, we won the Daytona uh, race uh -huh. uh, about two years, two and a half years ago. Um, okay. And Ross Chastain was our driver back then in one of our cars. And, yeah. and so we said, if uh, when we win our first race, they give us rings. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'll, yeah, I'll definitely wear that thing. Oh, so, yeah, yeah um, when you came in, you were leaning to the right a little. A little yeah, bit. A little. But so. we'll take it. Now we've won 14 uh, Xfinity races. Wow. And, uh, and won our first cup race. We won uh, the Brickyard at uh, Indianapolis yeah. uh, this summer. So, yeah. uh, and we won the regular season championship in the Xfinity series. Um, and and so that's again we're yeah. just growing that business. It's, it's fun. It's, it's so that's what it is. It's contagious. It's contagious. A few of these other questions you've yeah. asked, you've answered. Um, there's a ton of gutter protection products out there. Yep. Has your initial design changed over time in response to competition, or did you do it perfect the first time? You know, I, and I didn't design the product, uh -huh. and that's a great question. Um, 
and it, I think it speaks to what we're talking about with marketing and sales, but uh, I did not design the product. I didn't pat, you know, I own the patent. I, I did, um, you know, bought the patent mm -hmm. and bought the, bought the design. Uh, but we have improved the product. We, again, being a big company, I mean, we've got a whole research and development, um, you mm -hmm. know, team mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we put millions of dollars of research and development for these products that is giving us a competitive edge you know, over the, uh, uh, over really the industry. Mm -hmm. But um, no, when we first started, there were, there were nine, I think, uh, there were nine local gutter protection companies uh, doing the exact same thing, except with a different product, uh, you know, in our market that we would see at home shows and, and things like that. It seemed, yeah. you know, when we'd go to the John S. Knight Center for the home show in Akron, yeah. it seemed like it was a gutter protection show and people would even say that. Yeah. Like there's 13 of you. Yeah. What's the difference? And they all, everybody says they're the best and they say, but you have to be able to market hmm. and you have to be able to get in front of people. Um, and again, you ha have to be able to sell your product. You have to have a great product, but and you, you know, can't scratch their house with a ladder. You have to, you <laughs> no, you can't do that either. Because, yeah, yeah. well, especially the, now with the internet, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. they'll tell somebody. Yeah, they'll there'll be pictures it, of it. It'll, it'll be all minutes. over the place. So you have to do a really good job and, and uh, you know, Probably now more than ever in business, you have to have great customer service yeah. because again, they'll tell, you yeah. know, it used to be you just tell their neighbors or their friends or family, mm. but now you could tell, you could tell 7 billion people yeah. about bad experiences. And yeah, so yeah. you've got to minimize that and, yeah. um, you know, do, do a great job. Hey, here's, here's one from a friend of yours. Her name's Kimmy D. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she says, you are everywhere. We see you on KYC, WJW, Summer Olympics, Cleveland Indians. Yeah. When do you sleep? Don't how, sleep. How do you juggle? You must have an amazing marketing team. Amazing marketing team. Yeah. 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 She's probably talking about our well, uh, all of our marketing teams. Yeah. But yeah, we have Colleague Media uh -huh. um, and Kim. That's actually funny because yeah. she runs our she yeah. runs Colleague Media. Uh, yep. And um, no, but it's true. You don't you don't sleep. I mean, you have to prioritize. And do you, people do you plug think, yourself in at night. I'm even here on TV, <laughs> like doing. Do, do you plug yourself in at night? Do you recharge? What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Just hang out. But you yeah. just get used to it. Yeah. No, but I'm blessed with that energy too. Yeah. yeah. I have the crazy ability to function without sleeping. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, of course I have to sleep. But if I was up all night or you know or up super late and mm -hmm. get a couple hours of sleep, I have always had this weird ability to not be affected by that and, and be able to work. Well, your so, energy is contagious. It's been fun to talk to you. It has been fun. It's great fun to, uh, to have a vantage point here in town to watch you and, uh, and, and hear these things. So I want to thank you for being here. I want to get you home. Uh, and I want to thank everybody here at HCTV for giving up a night to help us. I want to thank everybody involved with Global Entrepreneurship Week, the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, and uh, all the people in social media that joined us tonight because social media fuels not only businesses like yours, but it fuels conversations like this. So uh, thanks out there, folks. And uh, we'll have new and exciting content for you again next, week, or next year for Global Entrepreneurship Week. Thanks. Good night. Good night.